much for being here tonight. We all have been so shocked, shocked at what happened in Sandy Hook. It is unfathomable that all those children could have died. I have to say that um, there should be shock as well about children on the streets of our city dying. As the Lieutenant Governor so aptly stated, this is a problem that strikes home on the streets of Wilmington. We had a press conference a few weeks ago to announce these proposals, these very, very excellent proposals. And a wonderful heroic leader in the city, I've spent a lot of time meeting all the heroic leaders in our city over the past year since I came back to the office. And one of those wonderful people came up to me and said, Kathy, why isn't anybody talking about our own children dying on the streets? And I'm glad you did. Because we see it every day, and it is horrific out there. Um, the number of guns out there in the hands of criminals is unacceptable in the state of Delaware. It is unacceptable on the streets of Wilmington. It is unacceptable in Dover. It is unacceptable in our small state. If we can't fix this problem, and I believe we can fix this problem, then nobody can. Delaware can do this. When I came back to the Attorney General's office, one of the first murder cases I was involved in was a young lady who was 21 years old. And she had a nine-day-old baby in her arms when she was the victim of a home invasion. The killers gunned her down holding that baby. She died, she fell over, and luckily the baby survived. But really, we can never let that happen again. Yet, on Sunday, a police officer is gunned down after a routine traffic stop. Every day, somebody is dying. It is out of control. We have record numbers of shootings, record number of homicides. And the bills we are proposing, this is one component of it. I can't stand here tonight and say to you, I won't stand here tonight and say to you that we can legislate our way out of the entire problem. I can't prosecute my way out of the entire problem. It is a very complex issue. There are societal components. There is you know, the lack of opportunity out there. But we have to do what we can do. And it stops now. I am so glad you're here, because you are the grassroots supporters. This cannot happen without your help. So let's talk about what we're doing. We put together the Attorney General's Office, along with the Lieutenant Governor, the Governor, put together a package of proposals that we believe go a long way toward dealing with the issue of guns in the wrong hands. This is not an effort to control gun ownership, legitimate gun ownership. It's a Second Amendment right. We honor it. We respect it. This is an effort to keep guns out of the hands of the wrong people. And to prohibit guns in some of the most sacred places we have in our state. That is our schools. So let me talk about a third, uh, fourth bill that we are proposing, and that is to ban the possession, the knowing possession, of a firearm within a safe school perimeter. It started out as a thousand feet. We quickly realized, in speaking to many people, that that would essentially uh, ban the possession in the entire city of Wilmington and the entire city of Dover. And so we thought that's just silly. Um, and it would have a disproportionate impact on people. So uh, we picked 300 feet. That is the current, um, it's, it's the current number of feet used in our drug laws to make possession of drugs within 300 feet of a school a higher degree of, of crime. And so currently, as, as things stand, we would propose to outlaw possession of a firearm within 300 feet of a school. There are some exceptions to that. 
And that is, again, because we spend a great deal of time talking to folks who said, but what about, but what about, but what about? And we're listening. And so this is a work in progress. But we certainly don't mean to uh, ban a weapon uh, in a motor vehicle when someone is lawfully traveling the streets and they happen to travel within 300 feet of the school. So there will be an exception for that. We certainly don't mean to stop an individual who is a hunter and, and is dropping his or her child off from school, you know, picking up or dropping off at school from doing that if they happen to have a, a, a lawful firearm in the vehicle. So there would be an exception for that. There, of course, is an exception uh, for those individuals who have a firearm as a course of instruction in the school. And so we're listening and we're modifying. But basically, if we can't keep firearms out of our schools where we leave our children, where it's supposed to be safe, where we ask our teachers to teach children not to be worried constantly about who's carrying, then what are we doing? What are we saying? What message are we giving to our children? So this proposal is designed to keep children safe and to create a small perimeter around that school where the police can interdict someone who has, has their intention to create havoc in the school. So that is one of the bills that we are proposing. Another is the assault weapons ban. That is also a work in progress and we are listening. Um, the definitions vary all over the country and we are looking at the various definitions. We are looking at the categories. Again, it's not meant to take away a weapon that is lawfully possessed today. And it will not do that. But it will stop weapons of war from getting into the wrong hands and being used. We have had, we have had in the very recent past, a horrific murder with a fully automatic weapon where someone just opened fire on the city street. It's just not okay, and it has to stop. It has to stop. So that is also one of our proposals. We hear a lot about, well, why aren't you enforcing the gun laws that you already have? We are enforcing the gun laws that we already have. But it is exceedingly difficult to get at some of these issues, such as straw purchases. So let me talk about that for a minute. Um, many, many, many of the weapons that get into the hands of dangerous individuals get there through a straw purchase. Because convicted felons aren't allowed to purchase weapons at a gun dealer. But someone who has no conviction for a felony a girlfriend, a relative, can go in and buy that weapon and just hand it right over. And so one of the proposals is to outlaw um, that type of activity already against the law, but to make it more enforceable by requiring the actual purchaser to report if that gun is lost or stolen. Because the police will tell you when they try to trace these guns, and they have very, very sophisticated methods for tracing guns these days, that inevitably they're stuck right where the lieutenant governor said they would be, which is they can trace it back to the purchaser, and then the purchaser says, well, I lost it, and, you know, or, you know, it was stolen, I just didn't report it. We have to stop that. We have to give the law enforcement officials a tool to trace it and to make that person responsible, to say, look, it's, it's up to you. It's fine to own it, but you better report it if it's lost. You better report it if it's stolen. So that's a very important um, proposal in terms of law enforcement, because that's what's going on every day. And convicted felons get hold of weapons so easily that way. Again, the universal background check is designed to get at private sales, um, private purchases. Right now, we have no way of monitoring whether a person is selling <coughs> a gun to a very dangerous person who is legally prohibited from possessing that weapon. So this is another very important law enforcement tool. And these are legislative initiatives. We are obviously focused on everything. 
focused on the prosecution of, the detection of, the investigation of, and trying to build the community relationships that we need to build to stop gun violence. Um, but with your help, we can hopefully, hopefully, make progress in the legislative arena. We're meeting with legislators, and they're listening to us, but it's your voices at the end. It's your voices. They will 